Mom's Old Photos While pulling down boxes from high on a shelf in a closet one morning last May, me and my wife were there sorting things out because my mother had just passed away, a large tattered envelope dropped to the floor that would keep us there most of the day. Picking it up, but not reading the label, I handed it off to my wife. When Melanie read the inscription out loud, what I heard cut my heart like a knife. Photos to help those who loved me remember. Please cherish them. This was my life. Mom was tenacious when picture time came. Her camera seemed part of her hand. I could still hear her. Just shut up and smile. When you're my age, you'll all understand. Whenever we wind. And I'm sure that our finding this packet of photos was planned. She knew in her wisdom the day would arrive when her photos of so long ago would serve to remind us how happy we were. And certainly, most of you know that memories are greatly enhanced by those moments that only a picture can show. Not chronologically placed in the envelope, Mel dumped them out on the bed. The first one I spotted was truly amazing. It showed them the day they were wed. My dad in a suit that he must have outgrown, and my mom with a veil on her head. Flipping it over, to see if she dated the shot, I would get a surprise. Pictures are worth, they say, thousands of words, and a picture, they say, never lies. And this one, I think, proves how happy we were to be married. Just look at our eyes. A caption in rhyme. Mom loved to write verse. I decided to set it aside. The next one I looked at showed all of our families together when Dad's brother died except for the days when my folks passed away. I think that's the hardest I've cried. And likely the reason I've often had trouble allowing affection to start. Not that I haven't loved anyone since quite as much as I did Uncle Bart. It's just that, with time, you get used to these things, and the pain isn't new to your heart. Well, seeing these two was enough to convince us we needed to look at each one. Mel felt the same, so she whipped out her cell phone and thoughtfully speed-dialed our son, telling him, Tommy, we're over at Granny's. Going to be late when we're done. While clearing a closet, we found some old pictures his mother and relatives took. And naturally, Carl, out of sheer curiosity, feels we should have us a look. I think so, too. And it may take a while. So, honey, today, you're the cook. That was the only loose end to contend with, and now that we'd had it addressed, we could begin to consider our options, and after they'd all been assessed, wisely devised the most practical method for viewing and sorting the rest. Mel was the first to suggest a proposal. Let's start making piles here and there by looking for details that tie them together, like when they were taken and where. Watch for the signs of a girl growing up, such as outfits and length of her hair. Here's a real old one. It's sad how they fade. I'd say she was probably three. Then I found a shot of her still in a crib and remarked, This reminds me of me, as Mel dug one out that was actually in color. One of the few that would be. We giggled our way through the bulk of the pack, but some had us fighting back tears. A few of the recent ones showed, if you knew her, a woman combating her fears from coping with cancer and bouts of depression from being without dad for ten years. This was my life seemed an odd way to phrase it, but that was precisely the truth. There in the piles we were slowly constructing was Mom from the days of her youth to when, due to illness, her weight had decreased and she looked a bit long in the tooth. Her hair, as a child, was as black as a raven, her eyes a deep emerald green, and, up till Dad died, her smile was as pretty as any that I have ever seen. 
we both were enthralled to discover a photo of her as a homecoming queen. Then Mel found a great one that showed Mom and Dad on the hood of an old yellow car. I found a funny one showing my dad proudly flaunting a long, ugly scar. The back of the photo read, Here's what you get when you tangle with drunks in a bar. More than a few showed them sitting on horses. They rode them all over the place. Another I found was of Dad when in high school, in uniform, playing third base. And one was a close-up of him at their wedding with frosting all over his face. One other aspect of viewing the pictures we loved was the heartwarming way, along with the year that the photo was taken, and oftentimes even the day, she'd added descriptions, and we were enchanted by some of the things they would say. Like, Orville and Rose in their three-dollar buggy. She dated it 1904. Carl with his Harley at Pinkerton Conico, Mr. Kincaid in the door. John, in his uniform, last one I got, on the day that he left for the war. First summer dress, was the caption she'd scribbled on back of a shot that was great. Barefoot and pigtailed and beaming with pride as she posed on an old wooden crate. First time on roller skates, notice my knees. October 06 was the date. One of the biggest, which should have been framed, showed her posing on stage at the prom. Right under that was a shot of her holding her very first grandson, our Tom. That one was tagged April 12, 62, and a terribly good one of Mom. One showed her helping her mother pick beans in the garden beside the garage. Another was captioned, Laverle on his birthday, all smiles in his 38 Dodge. The next one I grabbed was of me in my uniform, leaving for Beaver Dam Lodge. Scouting was fun, and it taught me a lot that without it I'd never have learned. The next made me chuckle. What corny old swimsuits. No wonder they never got burned. The next was of me helping Dad scoop up corn from a wagon he just overturned. You've got to be kidding, Mel busted a gut as she handed a picture my way. Hard to believe what the women were doing with hairstyles back in her day. Picture like this one, for me, makes it easy to see why she'd hide them away. The next one was taken the morning that Dad, after trying his best to refute her, finally gave in and sat down at Mom's desk and attempted to use her computer. He'd fought her like hell and had vowed if she didn't stop riding his butt, he would shoot her. But ten minutes later, with Mom's and my help, his eyeballs were glued to the screen, and what for so long was a stubborn old whiner had morphed to a mesmerized teen. And I can still hear him finally admitting, you're right. This is quite a machine. Then came a great one of Mom and Aunt Nellie at what I would guess was a dance. Probably a saw cop with what they were wearing. Aunt Nell was in corduroy pants. Mother once said she adored Fred Astaire and would kiss him if given the chance. The next was of Dad helping Mom mount a horse. I believe this is Grandfather's farm. I remarked, and she's written, A gentleman always, so handsome and loaded with charm. And to prove that he loved me, he had my initials tattooed on the side of his arm. Here, once again, was a cute little couplet, a sample of Mom in her prime. She loved to write verse, as I mentioned before, and I'm sure, if she'd taken the time, could have conveyed the great love in her heart that she had for her family in rhyme. The next was a dandy of Mom at the picnic last summer in Cedarwood Park. She loved to identify birds by their calls and the species of trees by their bark. That was the day that I mangled my finger while changing a tire in the dark. Finally, at noon, 
we were parsing the last, and Mel nodded yes when I said, This one, I think, we should take in for copies. His caption didn't need to be read. Taken the morning that Dad had his seizure. By seven that night, he was dead. Sorted at last by their looks and their captions, as close as we possibly could, we went through each pile and selected the ones that we felt were especially good and talked about who might be anxious to see them. We both knew that Tommy sure would. And we feel it's cool that, with each generation, evolves their particular look. And I am here to tell you that albums of photos are truly our lives in a book. But had we not found them, we'd still have remembered, without all the memories she took. Mom did so terribly much for our family, and though it's been said many times, mothers can never be fully repaid, especially with nickels and dimes. But now that she's living in heaven, and certainly whipping up cute little rhymes, she is delighted, no doubt, that the photos she meant for her children to find are garnering laughter and tears now and then, exactly as she'd had in mind whenever she took one, so wisely aware that at some point she'd leave them behind.